Hey guys, Jonas here. Today I'm going to touch briefly on telephoto lenses. Maybe you have a telephoto lens, but you're not getting the crisp, sharp images that you want to. Or maybe you're thinking of buying a new telephoto lens. I have a few things that could be useful to think about. The thing is, I had a chat with my dad and he asked me for some advice on buying a new telephoto lens. And I thought this could be something that maybe some of you uh, could find useful as well. First of all, I wanna say that this is not gonna be a review video per se, where I'm gonna tell you which lens to buy and which one not to buy. I understand that everyone is on a different budget level and also a different professional level. So different lenses work well for different people. But my dad is currently stationed in South Africa and this is how this all came up. He has plenty of chances to get cool pictures of awesome wildlife. He has a Canon Rebel camera, one of the newer versions in some parts of the world. This is the 100 series, but it's not feeling like he's getting as close to the animals with his pictures as he wants to be. I'm sure many people can relate to this. This is probably the main reason why we all get a telephoto lens. So he found this lens that went up to 600 millimeters focal length. Uh, sounds pretty awesome and it was pretty cheap too compared to other lenses with that range uh, but i told him there might be a few things to think about first before you just go ahead and buy a lens by looking at the millimeter number i've heard of a lot of people with good telephoto lenses that still have problems getting you know crisp images the first thing to consider is the shutter speed that you're uh, that you're shooting with basically the time that the sensor is exposed to the light in front of the camera. If you need to brush up on all of these things, we have a video on the basics of a DSLR camera, so check that out as well. If you're shooting handheld, like my dad is when he's out on safaris, the general rule is that you should use a shutter speed that it's the same number or faster than the focal length of your camera. So if you're, for example, using a 300 millimeter lens, then you should use a shutter speed that is one three hundredth of a second or faster. Okay, now I have two cameras here. This is one of the things I have to remind my dad of. Here I have my Canon 5D camera. It's a full sensor, full format camera, which means that when I take a picture with this camera, it kind of makes use of the full size of the sensor. This other camera, on the other hand, is Luis's 70D. And just like my dad's Rebel camera, these cameras have what's called a crop factor. So when you take a picture with these cameras, the camera kind of punches in on the sensor and doesn't use the full size of the sensor, which gives the impression that the picture is more zoomed in. What happens then is that any given a focal length of a lens that you put on this has to be multiplied by the crop factor. Uh, normally the crop factor is around 1.5, 1.6. So for example, if I take a 100 millimeter lens and put it on this camera, and multiply it by 1.6, the effective focal length of that lens then with that camera is going to be 160, 100 times 1.6. So this is something you have to take into account when you choose the shutter speed. Because if you go ahead and you buy a 600 millimeter lens and you put it on a Rebel camera, the effective focal length of that lens is going to be close to 1000 millimeters, 960 millimeters. That is a lot. And as awesome as that might sound, it is ridiculously hard to handhold 1000 millimeters and get sharp images. Fast shutter speeds require really good light because the sensor is only exposed for a really short time. Shooting at early morning or late afternoon drives may not always allow for those shutter speeds unless the ISO is bumped up, but then the images could get grainy instead. I've come back with plenty of, of shaky images just because I, I could not hold it still enough. Um, and, and it's super annoying when you sit there and you go through the images and, and you know that you messed up. You should have had a faster shutter speed, but the light was not enough. Okay, so some ways to help the situation. Cheapest and probably the easiest is to use a tripod. I just know that my dad probably isn't going to be carrying around a heavy tripod every time he goes on safari, but at least I'm trying to get him to use a monopod. Choosing a lens that has a built-in stabilizer will also help, but they are also a step up in price. Another reason lenses get more expensive is also how low you can drop the aperture. Cheaper lenses will usually have their lowest, most light-sensitive aperture at around 5.6, whereas professional lenses like this one goes down to 2.8 and stays there no matter how much I zoom in. 
This of course helps in low light and allows for faster shutter speed, but it also makes focusing trickier since you are also shrinking the depth of field. A little bit of movement and you might lose focus, so extra attention to focus is also a recommendation here. I shoot a lot of my stuff in manual focus mode, but it takes a lot of practice. To sum things up, should you get the extreme telephoto lens you have been longing for to get super close to your subjects? Sure you can, just remember that there are other factors as well you need to take into consideration to get the shots you want. Is it going to work for the time you plan to use it? I'm recommending my dad that if he gets this lens he was looking at, he needs to also bring a tripod or he's going to come home disappointed again. I hope that helped a little bit and I hope I didn't get you too frustrated about having to buy one of the most expensive lenses. I honestly don't want you to go ahead and, and start out by buying the most expensive lenses you can. Uh, work up a demand first instead and see what you can do with the equipment that you have. And then after a while you start realizing what you're missing and what you could do with better gear, then you're going to realize what you need. Feel free to leave some comments down below and see you in another video. Thanks for watching.